Hey, y'all, how you doing? All right, all right. It's good to see you. Glad you're all here. Let me ask the ushers to come forward and help us with tithes and offerings. And while they're coming, let me just tell you that here at the La Plata campus, every campus does some of its own local missions and outreach things. But here at the La Plata campus, we've been taking up backpacks and school supplies uh, for the kids going back to school uh, this year. And I just need you to know that there, I, I, we don't have a full count yet, but we got just piles and piles and piles of supplies that are going out and they are, that, that have either gone out or going out. And we are going to be helping seven elementary schools that represent 3,200 students in Southern Maryland. And so we're just, I'm just, I just want to say thank you. just want to say thank you for everything you've done. So here, let me pray for us. Lord, we just thank you for everything you allow us to do. Now, God, help us to follow you. Help us to help others. Help us to see needs and help us to be a giving people. We thank you, Lord, for what you do. And we will give you praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys go ahead. Um, now, let me, um, let, me, let me just remind you where we were last week. I, I, I want to remind you of this in, in case anybody missed, and I'm going to do this very, very quickly, okay, very quickly. So uh, you'll remember we talked about God and the fact that God exists in Trinity. There is Father, uh, there is Son, and there is Holy Spirit. Now, w- the, reason, the reason it is important that God exists in Trinity is that God then exists in community within himself. We talked about this last week. God is community. Say to your neighbor, God is community. Tell them that for me. So God is community. Because God is community and we were made in his image, we now need community. Look at your neighbor say, you need community. Tell your neighbor that. Those are true statements. God is community and we need community are true statements. But, but what we've got to do now is we've got to unpack why that is actually helpful in our lives. And the Bible talks about that. Now, I want, I want you to hear me because sermon series like this one are not, are not the easiest ones for me to teach. Uh, because I like, I like sermon series that unpack major biblical truth or sermon series that give you great leadership pointers. What I really need to do today is I need to coach a little bit. So if you'll, you, sometimes I preach, sometimes I teach, and sometimes I coach. So today, if you'll let me, I need to be your life coach for a little bit. Look at your neighbor and say, he's your life coach right now. Tell him. So, so some of you, for some of you, that's a nightmare. And for some of you, you've been praying for that for a long time, okay? So, so I, I, just, I just need you to know that's kind of what we're going to do. Now watch. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep the basic structure in place. So you understand that what I just did, stay with me, is I kept the image of God in place. But we're going to apply it in a different way so that I can help you understand why community matters so much in your life and how it will change your life, how it will make you better, how it will make you a better Christian, even a better human, if you will. So, so let's start then with God, because it always starts with God. Just say this after me. It always starts with God. God, God is always first. He always comes first. It always starts with him. He's the one that created everything. He's the one that created everyone. He put us on this earth. It is God who said it is not good that the man should be alone. It is God who ordained that we would have community, that we would have family. It is God that said this is the way this should work. And so we now need to hear from the Word of God to help us understand how this works. So if you've got your Bibles, turn to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, I'm going to be in Ecclesiastes verse, uh, chapter 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Now, if you're not familiar with your Old Testament, Psalms, you're going to find Psalms because it's the biggest, longest thing there. So find Psalms, go to Proverbs, and then go to Ecclesiastes. You'll get there very easily, all right? So just just find Ecclesiastes chapter 4. I'm going to start reading verse 9. Now, remember, this is the Bible. We believe in the Bible, right? Try it again. We believe in the Bible, right? Yes. All right, just making sure. Uh, so, so Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, listen to what it says. Two are better than one. Come on now. Do I really need to teach that point? I'm going to teach it anyway, but two are better than one. You got to understand that it is better to be with someone yes. 
than to be on your own. Now watch, watch. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Yesterday, I was out in my yard on Friday. I was out in my yard and it was, it was, it was, did y'all notice it was hot Friday? Yeah, I was working in my yard all day long. I started my day on Friday with a doctor's appointment, my, my annual checkup. And, and the doctor said, when you, you, now you're old enough that we ought to do a stress test and make sure you're good. I went back home and I spread mulch and moved hay around because of a project that's going on. And I'm trying to plant grass and get mulch, get rid of mud. I'm doing all that. Trust me, I took my stress test. I am good, you know. I mean, because I, if I didn't, if I didn't fall out in the backyard out there doing what I, because I, y'all, it took three sets of clothes and three showers to get me through that day. Because old men sweat a lot. I'm just telling you now. So, so at any rate, it was it was a mess. I would have loved at that moment to have somebody else help me. Now it was one of my by myself projects, so I was enjoying that. But on the other hand, two are better than one because they have good return for their labor. I would have been done a whole lot faster, I'm just telling you. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. If I had fallen out, who would have picked me up? <laughs> if, we, if either one of them falls down, the other can help the other, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. I need you to know that the darkness of discouragement and depression becomes absolute when you are walking through it alone. But if you are walking through it with someone else, it's temporary and passing. When you're walking through it alone, it feels permanent and all-encompassing. You, you, you see this, right? That's what is being said here emotionally. Let's shift this to emotionally. If either one of them falls down emotionally, the other one can help them up. But pity the one who falls into depression and darkness and has no one to help them. I'm giving you a word of encouragement. I'm coaching you here to say to you that you cannot do life alone. You need other people to do this with you. You say, well, I don't have a family like you have. I don't have that. I don't have that. No, no, no. This is, not a, this, is, this is not a statement of me talking about family. Family's part of it, but family's not all of it. Everybody's got that? Yes, I come from a strong family, and we, we have built. Tina and I, the Lord has allowed us to build a strong family. That's a true statement. But that is not the be-all, end-all of the whole story. You need people around you, regardless of how much family, if any, that you still have left. If there's no family around you, you got to build community anyway. Everybody all right? Because it's still true that you need community, verse 11. Also, if two lie down together, they'll keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? At my age, that's not hard. Uh, <laughs> though, though, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. And a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Now, community matters. You see, watch, here's the way community needs to work. It all starts with God. Somebody said it all starts with God. It all starts with God. But it does not end there. It moves forward because God created us and God created us so that we could live in community. Watch. God created us so that we could live in community with him. So myself, self has to be in community with God. I, I need you to understand that the health of your other relationships can be made better or be made worse by the health of your relationship with God. If your relationship with God is falling down, it will negatively affect other relationships. And if your relationship with God is building up, it will positively affect your other relationships. You need to understand that we start with our relationship with God when we, when we are dealing with this. Then it goes to others. And this is friends. This is community. This is whatever it might be. But this same trinity of humanity exists when I'm talking about community among people that exists when I'm talking about God within himself. Remember, God, say this after me again, God is community. God is community. So it makes sense that we are duplicating what God is with the community we build around us. Now watch, watch this. There is now, there is now all of these things 
All of these people are connected. That's the first thing I need you to understand. In my community, I am connected. I am connected. That's what a community does. It connects you. A community keeps you strong. It keeps you centered. When, when I was coming up, I, I, I've told you this many times, but I grew up in a small church. I, I spent my entire life, until new life grew, Tina and I spent our entire lives in small churches. So quite literally, we moved here when I was about 32 years old. And so, so, so up for 32, 33 years of our lives, we spent our time in small churches. In a small church, you know everybody. And I always knew everybody. I knew everybody. I knew everybody in my church by name. I knew their children. I knew their children's children. I knew their cousin's third wife's mama's child. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, I, we just knew everybody. And so, so, so we understood all the connections because you had to. Your first Sunday at a church in, in North Carolina, if you went to a new church as the pastor, your first Sunday, you don't say nothing to or about anybody because you have not yet figured out who's related. And somehow they are all related. You just got to figure out how. And you got to figure out where all the feuds are. And so it was always a small church. Here's the deal in a small church. In a small, a small church is a community in and of itself. And so I would notice if somebody had come to church, I would notice and I would go, I would go talk to them. I would call them. I would do something because I would notice they were not there. Now, now I remember being in, in, in the first church team I worked in full time back in Kings Mountain. One of the older ladies there, Margie, she said, well, I don't understand all you new young preachers. Okay. Why? She said, well, when Jack Phillips was here, Jack Phillips would come and visit with us every day. I was like, I was like, Margie, <clears throat> I, I was young enough to know the answer to this question. I was, I was young enough to not supposed to know, but I did. Now watch. I looked at her and said, Margie, where'd you live? She said in that house right there, and she pointed. And we were standing in the back parking lot right there. I said, where'd Jack live? Right there. I said, Margie, where'd Ida live? Right there. I said, I said, I said Margie, Margie where, 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 where did, where, where, I, you know, I could call four or five names where they live. She pointed at everybody's house. I said, Margie. Jack wasn't visiting you. He was taking a walk in the afternoon and you interrupted it. <laughs> so times change. Community changes. Well, watch, watch, watch. The way community works changes. But the fact that community is a need does not. See, see in the South, down South, we all had front porches. And you tended to have a swing on the front porch. You know why? Because that's where you went and sat in the afternoon. Yeah. And as everybody took their walk, you'd wave. And every once in a while, you'd say, hey, Bob, come here. How's your mama now? Yeah. <laughs> He'd say, they're good. And you'd talk for a little bit. And you'd say, hey, your cousin, Billy Bob. <laughs> he moved to the big city out in Raleigh, didn't he? Y'all think I'm making this up. I am not making this up. All right. Y'all think Mayberry was made up. No, that's a real place, y'all. I have been there. My brother-in-law used to pastor the church there. I mean, I mean, that's the way, that was community. Okay, today it doesn't work like that. And we've got to build community. Look, you've got to find ways to be connected. Why? Because in connection... In connection, oh, let me do blue. I want to do blue. Let me do blue. In connection, we add value to one another. Connection adds value to you. It adds value to the people you connect with. I don't mean you have no value without people, without everybody else. You have value simply because you're made in the image of God. Everybody's got that, right? Yeah. You, you don't have value because you're an American, you don't have value because you're white or you're black or you're Hispanic. You don't have value because you're rich or you're poor. You don't have value because you're educated or not. You don't have value because you're employed or not. You have value because you're, you're made in the image of God. But the connections in our lives increase the value of our lives. In fact, can I just tell you, in, the, in this service right here, I, I, I get a kick out of this every week. I get a kick out of this. On, in, in this service right here, we, we, we have the young adult group right over here. Y'all, come on, give us a shout tonight. Y'all shout out. There you go. 
We got about 30 of them over here. I watched them all pile out of their meeting and then come over here to church. They met and then they came to church. Look, they're doing life together. They are connecting with each other. Now, let me tell you something. Because of all the lights in my eyes, I see some of you, but I don't see all of you. And I would not necessarily notice if one of them was here or was not here. Okay? I wouldn't. And I don't mean to offend anybody with that. Please don't be offended. I may or may not notice. But let me tell you something. If they don't show up at that group, that group will notice. That matters. That's why groups matter. It's because they connect you. And in connection, we have great value. Number two, it's not only the fact that it's connected. I want to show you something. It's not just connected. It's also, watch, if I put a line here, it's also protected. When I'm in groups, I'm protected. Now, I want to show you something. Because God is first, somebody say God's first. Because God is first, when I'm connected this way, I am protected by more than just the love and the opinions of my friends. I am protected this way by the morality and the purity of the God of heaven who sees what I cannot see, understands what I do not know, and can protect me from what I don't even know is out there for me to worry about. It's the God of heaven that gives extra protection. We are under, if I dare say this, those of you who are from charismatic background will get this. I am under the covering of the God of, the God of heaven who is covering me and the others I'm connecting with in his name. And his word, his spirit, his direction gives me purity and gives me morality. Watch, if I am outside of the realm of God, I can still have connectivity without the Holy Spirit. Everybody's got that? There are plenty of humans that have connectivity without the Holy Spirit of God. But when I have connectivity with other believers in the presence of the Holy Spirit of God, I now have connectivity with the protection and the covering of a God who brings to the table morality, purity, and insight into things I could not possibly know. That's what God's doing for us as a group. And when you connect with other groups, what you find is what, what happens is my value, they value me and they love me. That's why they would protect me. Y'all, that's why God would protect you. Can I teach you a really hard truth? God does not protect you because he needs you. God protects you because he loves you. Now, that, 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 that's a huge truth. See, I think sometimes we think God needs us. I think sometimes we think, well, God needs me. If I'd, God didn't have me, then that whole ministry over yonder just wouldn't make it. Or this particular thing over here, God needs me or them people wouldn't. Y'all, wait, hold on. God doesn't need you. He loves you. And it's his love for you that causes him to protect you. You say, well, when has God protected me? Can I ask you a question? Some of you will say yes to this. Many of you won't. Were you in a horrible accident this week? A couple of you will say yes. Pastor Aaron would say yes. He got his head cut to this, this past week, got stitches in it. The Lord protected him. Somebody say, thank the Lord. Thank you know, some of you would say yes, but most of you would say no. Okay. Say thank you, Jesus. Why? Because you weren't in a major accident. He protected. Mm. Oh, you're just playing games now. If I had a bad week, you'd say that was the devil. No, no. I'm telling you, God, if, if you, <laughs> y'all, God's always in every moment and he's protecting us from one thing or another at all times. And we got to trust him. He's, he protects us because he loves us. Now, back up, back up. Not only does God do that, the people I'm in community with do that as well. They come alongside. I have to tell you, I've had multiple times this week that either I've come alongside someone to show support in a difficult moment or they've come alongside me. I've had multiple of those moments this week and not all of them with people that live in this state or in the DMV. You see, community is not always limited by geography. Now, it matters that you have people within reach. Don't get me wrong. 
It matters that you have people within reach, but it doesn't mean you can't have community with somebody that is a continent or a, or, or a planet away. The truth is community is what we need because it adds value to us. Community is what we need because it's what brings love into our existence. And I don't mean to sound too much like the writer of a 1950s song, but <sighs> you need love in your life. And if you, don't, if you don't have love in your life, come on, where's the beauty? Where, 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 where's the color in your life if there's no love? Where, where, where's, mm, stay with me. When you find love in your life, and I'm not just talking about, oh, that ushy-gushy thing they do on TV when they say, oh, you fell in love in 45 minutes and got married <laughs> on a TV show? Stop it. <laughs> just stop. No, no, no. I'm talking about a community that loves one another. I'm talking about the capacity to look to, to, to look at your friend and say, I'm going to stand by you because I love you. I, I'm talking about the capacity to, oh man, I'm about to preach a sermon for a couple weeks from now. I better stop. All right, so stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Okay, now, now in my community, I'm connected because they add value. In my community, I'm protected because they love me. In my community, I'm growing. I'm growing. Community allows you to grow. And it allows you to grow because you can see the world in a new way and in a different way. You can understand the world from someone else's perspective. I've told you before, when we write these sermons, we write them in group. And the group gets together. We put together. Why? Because in the group, we begin to see things in different ways. You say, oh, that's just you teaching them. No, sometimes it's them teaching me. We got to understand that sometimes the perspective is totally different based on the generation that has to be, happens to be speaking into the moment. And I need to hear from all of those different perspectives or else I'm going to say something that, that I don't know, all the 50 and up will understand and all the 45 and under will go, what's he talking about? You know, I mean, I, I, we've got to be careful with this. That's what community does is it, is it enriches you. It helps you to grow. Watch, watch, watch. The truth is that community here, when, when, you know, when I'm connected, it adds value. When I'm protected, it shows love. But when I'm growing, it strengthens me. It gives me strength. There is strength in numbers that does not exist anywhere else. Can I be honest? We need morality and purity from God. Watch. But we need plurality by being with more than just me. We get our morality and our purity from God, but we get our plurality by standing together and not being trapped alone somewhere, not being in that darkness that has no one else with me, but being in a place where there are others with me who believe the same God I believe, who read the same Bible I read, who pray to the same Holy Spirit I pray to, and who understand that there's more to this life than just surviving today. I need people that can walk me through that because look, every one of us, no matter how smart you are, no matter how successful you are, no matter how, and look, no matter how rich you are, you need other people in your life or you will lose perspective on the world around you. And it needs to matter. It needs to matter. Proverbs 27, 17 reads like this. As iron sharpens iron. So one person sharpens another. Yes. This is a very important verse in my world. Very. Uh, and it's important for a lot of reasons. We, we, we coach pastors. We stand together. We minister together. Our pastors in so many different cities, we come back together and, and we still come back together and we work on sermons, we work on, work on preaching, we work on how do we reach people, we work on how do we grow the church, we work on how do we get people saved because that's the issue is getting people saved. It's getting people to Jesus. And so we'll meet together and, and we'll, we'll talk about this. We'll, we'll sharpen one another, we'll help one another as iron sharpens iron. The old version says, so one man sharpens another. My boys and I, on vacation a few years ago, they were shocked when I said I would do it. Decided to get a tattoo. It's not much of a tattoo, so don't get excited. But in the same spot right there, we put Proverbs 27, 17. Because we wanted to understand 
that our job with each other, even as father and three sons, our job was to sharpen one another. It's not always comfortable. It's not always easy. It's not always what I want to hear when the boys say something to me, and it's not always what they want to hear when I say something to them. But you know what they know? They know that I have a value for them that will never be diminished by anything they do or say. They could never do anything that would lessen my value for them. And I know that there's nothing they could, that I could do that would lessen my value to them. They know that I love them. They know full well I would trade off anything in my world shy of their mother for them. They know that I love them. And they know that if they ever lack strength, all they need to do is, bo is borrow mine. Years ago, a pastor that I know was struggling because his church was not doing well. He called up his mentor and he said, I, I, I don't think I can do this. His mentor said, you can do this. You can do this. He said, I just don't have any faith right now. He said, I tell you what, I have more faith in you than you will ever need. Borrow mine till you find yours again. Today, that man pastors a church that exceeds 20,000 in attendance. At the time, it was about 150, and they couldn't get past it. And the man whose faith he borrowed is the general superintendent of the denomination we exist in. That's what God can do with community. That's what God can do with you. He can take you from a moment where you have no faith, but give you a community that will have faith for you and bring you through to a greater place. Community matters. Now, at every campus that we're at, this weekend is what we call our groups sign-up weekend or our groups weekend. And so what I want to do is this. I'm not going to end this sermon in any traditional manner. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to call your campus pastor up and I'm going to have your campus pastor come and talk to you about how to get connected to a group. Now, everybody listen to me. You're going to want to disconnect and you're going to think the sermon's over. It's not over. It's not over. I'm going to have somebody else come up, your campus pastor come up and tell you how to respond to the altar call. Because the altar call in this case is get connected. Why? Because you were created for connection and you need connection. So campus pastor, come on up.